welcome to the Acupuncture Outsider podcast. My name is Richard Hazel, and in the time it takes for you to commute to or from work, I hope to have shared something of interest about orthopedic acupuncture using motor points, trigger points, myofascial slings, uh, neurofunctional acupuncture, segmental treatments, anything that crosses my mind that seems to be of interest. I hope you'll enjoy it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Acupuncture Outsider. This is Richard Hazel. And today's topic is the SI joint. I think um, it's, well, it's a topic that I could probably talk for more than an hour and still not fully um, explain the complexities of the SI joint and its importance, but I'm going to try to highlight the most important aspects of the SI joint in 15 to 20 minutes so that somebody who might be new to orthopedic acupuncture is getting a good sense of the importance of the SI joint. Um, Dr. Vladimir Yanda was very aware of the importance of the SI joint. He knew that the neck, the SI joint, and the plantar surface of the foot had the most proprioceptors and therefore were very important and very likely why he would say that all issues start at the pelvis. So let's talk about why, because I think a lot of times people only think about the SI joint when they have somebody in their office who has SI joint pain. And I would say SI joint pain is while very likely an issue of SI joint stabilization, and sometimes it's from trauma, it is not the only SI joint dysfunction that we are treating. In fact, it's a, I would say it's a small percentage of SI joint dysfunction um, to actually have SI joint pain. And I did a, an episode about SI joint pain and that it very often comes from trigger points in the piriformis or, or the gluteus maximus. Um, but that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about dysfunction of the SI joint, which will not always be felt at the SI joint. In fact, many times it is not felt at the SI joint. The SI joint does have a mechanical function uh, called nutation, which is an anterior tilt where it locks itself so that the pressure from above or below is being um, stably transferred between the upper body and the legs. So you think about the the uh, sacrum and its sort of triangular shape and how it fits into the pelvis um, between the two innominate bones and how that SI joint is receiving a lot of pressure from coming from above and also coming up from below, especially for someone who's walking or running, you, the, the force transfer goes up through the leg to the pelvis, to the SI joint, and the body needs to dynamically stabilize itself. So the, the proprioception from the SI joint instantaneously gives the body feedback on how much pressure is coming up or coming from above so that the muscles can perfectly stabilize without overdoing it or underdoing it. If you've ever accidentally stepped off a curb that you thought was uh, less high than it is, like sometimes there's a drainage or something at the corner and you think you know the height of the corner of the curb that you're about to step off of and instead you go down a little further than you thought it's a rude awakening when your heel hits the the ground uh, with pressure that you did not expect and when so when that happens it's very jarring and the body has to instantaneously stabilize because you mentally were not even prepared uh, for that jolt 
and the body has a way to stabilize it doesn't mean you won't always it doesn't always mean that you won't get injured but the body feels that force and has to instantaneously stabilize the SI joint where that where that force is getting distributed to and then and then dissipated so the the SI joint has a lot of proprioception and one of the main uh, contributors to the way your body will stabilize the SI joint is a ligament called the sacrotuberous ligament. And it goes from the sacrum down to the tu- the ischial tuberosity um, where your hamstrings and adductor, um, adductor magnus will attach. So the hamstrings and the adductor magnus actually have fascial connections to the sacrotuberous ligament which allows the hamstrings and the adductor magnus to also assist with stabilization of the SI joint via the ligament. So then you have your glute max that attaches to that ligament. You've got the deep rotators, the gemelli and the obturator internus and the piriformis that are all coming into that uh, ligament fascia connections they're they're attached to you know at the sacrum and other things too but but they have uh, fascia connections to the ligament that allows them to help stabilize the SI joint you also have the spinal erectors that come down and they attach over the sacrum where the SI joint is with what's called the erector aponeurosis so you have this aponeurosis full of proprioception going over the sacrum. So when there is some instability um, that can be caused by weakness in the glute max, um, different things that can happen, um, maybe an increased lordosis, those erectors are tightening to help stabilize the SI joint. So, um, and by the way, the glute max and the latissimus dorsi have a connection through the thoracolumbar fascia which also runs over the sacrum and the sac- and the SI joint so your 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 contralateral lat and your glute will work together to help stabilize the pelvis and the SI joint so you have your right glute max and your left lat connected via the thoracolumbar fascia. So there's a lot of proprioception going through there. They can help dynamically stabilize the pelvis and the SI joint. So when when something's weak, like the glute max gets shut off, often because of something tight like the psoas, other hip flexors, you have, um, you have other muscles that will help to stabilize the SI joint. And those tend to be the erectors, the hamstrings, sometimes adductor magnus, and the deep rotators they're all and they're all prone to tightening and shortening so weak glutes can cause a pain uh, syndrome like the uh, deep deep gluteal syndrome where the rotators are are hitting the sciatic nerve Um, it can cause uh, tight hamstrings can cause tight erectors causing back pain um, some people even treat the hamstrings for low back pain, and they explain it as uh, the hamstrings causing a posterior pelvic tilt. But very often, I think what's really happening is they're stretching the hamstrings, allowing the hamstrings to better stabilize the SI joint, and thereby thereby relieving um, back pain. Because Many, many people have an anterior pelvic tilt. It's not very common to find a posterior pelvic tilt. So I don't buy the tight hamstrings causing low back pain explanation that I've heard many, many, many times. I would say they're helping by stretching the hamstrings. They're actually helping the SI joint stabilization, thereby um, allowing the low back muscles like the erectors to not have to work so hard to stabilize. Also, you have those deep rotators that are always going to screw up your back. And by the way, the deep rotators like the piriformis that attach at the sacrum, the the piriformis can cause SI joint pain uh, when it's tight as well. And yes, it's it's, it's two things. It's 
pain from the piriformis at the tendon where it attaches and it's the SI joint not being stabilized well because those muscles are so tight that they're not strong. So the there's a lot going on there at the SI joint that is all about proprioception and stabilization that doesn't always cause SI joint pain directly. The, the pain that it will cause will be low back pain, uh, perhaps an, a hamstring injury, um, deep gluteal syndrome, or hip pain. You get a lot of hip pain from deep t- uh, the deep rotators getting super tight because the antagonist, um, the TFL and the glute min, which are internal rotators, will always tighten when your deep rotators are tight because they're trying to keep your legs in alignment. Otherwise, you're walking with your toes turned out. Um, you've seen ballet dancers. You see a lot of, um, you see a lot of bodybuilders walking with their hips externally rotated because those rotators have gotten super tight. And, um, but most of us have a TFL and a gluteus minimus that are strong enough to correct for some of that external rotation being pulled um, from being pulled by the deep rotators. So, so our legs are lining up fine. Um, but eventually you start having, um, pain over the greater trochanter, which may get diagnosed as like a bursitis, like a trochanteric bursitis, um, or a gluteus medius or gluteus minimus tendinopathy. So those, those definitely you want to stay on top of for hip pain and consider it as a an SI joint um, stabilization issue when those rotators are getting super tight. So then start to consider some of the other things that could cause that SI joint instability, which would be what the glute max and, and uh, contralateral latissimus dorsi perhaps are not helping to stabilize. Maybe there was a previous hamstring injury So the hamstring is weaker on that side where there's pain. So the hamstring's not stabilizing the SI joint. Um, And of course, look for trigger points in the piriformis. And um, the the superior gemellus is prone to trigger points as well. Um, Sometimes you do have to get into the others, the obturator internus and the gemellus inferior. But very often you're going to see the superior gemellus and the piriformis having trigger points and a lot of uh, dysfunction. So the that's a big part of the SI joint. So when people are um, thinking about SI joint issues, a lot of times they focus only on the joint as if the joint is the dysfunction and the joint is suffering from the dysfunction. The joint is suffering from the stabilization not happening from the glutes and the deep rotators and the spinal erectors and the hamstring and the adductor magnus and the latissimus dorsi and the glute max. So um, uh, so when you have something uh, SI joint related, take back you know step back and look at the big picture and try to figure out what's going on that would cause, uh, dysfunction at the SI joint. And when you have low back pain, think of it as an SI joint issue. When you have deep gluteal syndrome, it's an SI joint issue. If you have tight hamstrings, it might be an SI joint issue. Um, you know, even the peroneus longus gets tight uh, from that issue. So there are some, like Carl Levitt would work a lot with the peroneus longus for low back pain. And that's the explanation, the force transmission through the heel and the peroneus longus, because by the way, the peroneus longus not only everts, but it it helps to plantar flex. So on toe off, there is some activation of the peroneals. So you've um, you've got a force transmission up the peroneals to the hamstring, ischial tuberosity to the sacro tuberous ligament to the SI joint that all is one chain and anything along that way could be causing an SI joint instability 
that won't be felt as SI joint pain, but may be felt as hip pain or back pain or hamstring issues, or even lateral ankle issues. Um, they all could be overworking in order to help stabilize. So um, it's it's important to, to recognize the proprioceptive role of the SI joint in diagnosing. Um, you can imagine, see, you can see why Vladimir Yanda said that most issues start at the pelvis because you, if you have an SI joint issue that's actually causing latissimus dorsi issues, could that not affect the neck and the shoulder? And I would say, yes, it could. Um, we often see the, the lats affect the anterior shoulder because where, they, where it attaches at that intertubercular sulcus, um, it can put some internal rotation on the humerus and cause shoulder issues and mobility issues, by the way. And then tight lat can help, can, can inhibit um, flexion and abduction of the shoulder. Um, that upward rotation that we're looking for can be inhibited by tight, the tight lat. So you can imagine SI joint could actually cause shoulder problems and neck problems, right? So uh, just something to think about. The SI joint is um, really, really important even when it's not causing pain. It's just, un it's Im just important to understand its function as a proprioceptor and, um, and that it has a huge function uh, as for, for force transmission from above and below. Um, to allow our body to dynamically stabilize for all the things that we want to do, walking, running, bending, lifting, um, deadlifts, um, squats, all the things that athletes want to be able to do. SI joint is key. So it doesn't have to be in pain to be the problem. So I just wanted to throw that out there, something to think about. Um, think about all the ways that the body is trying to stabilize the SI joint when you're trying to diagnose something with hip pain, um, back pain, uh, leg issues, um, even up to the shoulder or the neck. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, oh, so if you want to read more about that, definitely look at um, Andre Vlaming's work, the myofascial slings. He does an excellent job explaining it all way better than I can. And of course, um, you know, it's a, it's quite a thick book if you find one of his books and lots of footnotes to read, but it's well worth it. If you really want to be an expert at treating pain, I highly recommend, um, you know, keep learning and, and read about these things because the, the better grasp you have on it, the faster you're going to recognize the patterns when they when someone walks into your office. Okay, so that's that. I hope you have a great week, and uh, I will talk to you soon.